We as humans are constantly adding new technology into our lives. But over the last few years, I've realized that new technology, new high-tech devices, do not always cause massive changes in human behavior. Instead, I find that they sometimes seamlessly enhance existing or classical traits. I've been working with wearable computers for the last five years. Most recently, my team and I have created the Pebble smartwatch, uh, which we launched on Kickstarter last year. We've taken a century-old device and, did, and remixed it with a bunch of modern technology. For example, my watch will vibrate when I get a new text message and will display the caller ID of someone when they're giving me a call. But the really cool thing is that software developers have started to write apps for Pebble. This is an example of an ambient information display that shows uh, live local weather data as well as an upcoming alert. But some people have asked, uh, some people are worried. They're thinking, will this new, new technology cause more and more um, messages come to people's wrists and people will be constantly looking down at their watch and become more distracted? So we've talked to some of the uh, 100,000 people who are using Pebble on a daily basis. And the answer that we came across, across was not exactly. It turns out that people who are already addicted to checking messages on their phone will use Pebble in a very similar fashion. They'll configure their watch so that every single message that they receive on their, on their phone vibrates on their wrist. But other people will use it in a completely opposite manner. They'll use Pebble as a filter. So the low-level, unimportant messages like email or Facebook notifications only come to the phone. But the really important messages like an SMS from your child or an incoming call from your husband will immediately alert you on your watch. From talking to users and seeing how smartwatches mesh into real life, I began to see parallels into other services that I use in my life. I'm a massive, massive fan of bike sharing programs. In major cities, these bikes have been loaded up with technology like GPS and cell modems and enable people to pick up a bike at one stop and drop it off at any other spot around, around the city. I find it great because I don't have to lug my bike onto the train anymore. I'm also... Um, I'm also a couch surfer. I don't do this type of couch surfing. I offer my couch and my spare bed out to, f out to friendly travelers who need a spot to stay. I use a website called Couchsurfing, which links me up with people and helps me vet, vet uh, potential travelers before they uh, come to stay at my place. These high-tech services and devices all solve useful problems. Pebble helps create a more effective, easy communication. Bike shares allow people... Uh, Bike shares solve short scale mass. And, um, <laughs> and basically, what I'm getting at is that the devices and products that people love are also services that mesh extremely well into your existing life. They don't force you to change your habit, and they don't force you to adopt different behaviors. They just work. My name is Eric, and I'm the founder of Pebble. Uh, sorry about that. Um, no problem. Let me ask you one question, and then since I know everyone's very curious about Pebble, I'm going to take one question from the audience. So in a way, you've super succeeded. Not only did you launch on Kickstarter, but you started a new industrial sector, right? So Samsung has its phone out. There are all the rumors of Apple having its phone. Um, how do you plan to come? Oh, we saw Qualcomm's phone yesterday, right? So three major industrial initiatives started because you started on Kickstarter. How do you plan to to react compete? to that? Yeah. Well, I think what we're what we're saying is that we're the people that have been working on this for many years, and we care deeply about it. We don't do anything else. Our entire company is focused on building software and hardware that kind of meshes into your daily life. So this is this is the problem that we face, and we feel like if we devote you know our our attention to this, we'll be able to figure something out that doesn't have a legacy of old software or hardware that has to come along with it. So unerring focus on one thing. If anyone's used, if anyone's looked at the Samsung phone, it has extraordinary feature creep. It does so much stuff, it's crazy. Um, one question from the audience, please, um, for, for Eric. Anyone? Nope. Ah, here we go. 
All right, at this stage of the venture, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> I think I think it's very much hiring. Like yeah. as, uh. as any as any small company faces, it's it's a it's a it's a challenge to sort of get the best people onto the team. And the people that we're interested in hiring are the people that are thinking about new interfaces and new ways to actually like bring computers onto the body. So that's how many what employees we're, do you have now? We have 35. <laughs> very cool, man. Congratulations. Thanks, Eric <laughs>